Hello, uh, my name is Sean Bo. I'm an engineer working at the Zcash company, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, Sapling, which is a network upgrade that's slated to activate later this year, hopefully in October. Uh, just to kind of give a little bit of a recap, uh, Sapling is uh, a network upgrade, but we like to codename basically all of our major releases. Uh, the first release that we did uh, in October 2016 was nicknamed Sprout. Uh, I believe we came up with that because it kind of symbolizes uh, like a fragile but uh, optimistic beginning. Um, and then nothing really happened, well, a lot happened actually, if you listen to Nathan's talk, uh, for about a year and a half. Um, lots of releases and fixes and tiny adjustments and stuff like that, but uh, as of yesterday, we finally activated Overwinter, which is the first network upgrade, and it went successfully, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so in about, I don't know, 20 weeks or whatever it is, uh, in October of this year, uh, we're planning to activate Sapling, which is a much more significant uh, network upgrade. Um, it will be, uh, when it's activated, the product of over two years of uh, cryptographic engineering and design work and, uh, and auditing and, and so forth. And uh, it kind of started out as a bunch of different pet projects where uh, I and others were looking for ways to improve the performance of uh, ZK Snarks and kind of push the boundary of what's possible with ZK Snarks. We're also trying to improve uh, the parameter setup because ZK Snarks need this uh, parameter setup, the ceremony. So I wanted to make it much more scalable to, to perform these setups, um, much more robust against attackers. And also I uh, was kind of looking into these uh, other kind of miscellaneous performance things and uh, curb security and, and, and stuff like that. So it kind of all came together and thanks to a bunch of really amazing cryptographers in, in our company and in academia, um, we were able to kind of bundle it all together into one big upgrade this year. So uh, just to kind of recap, uh, the way that Zcash works is users send money to each other and from each other uh, using uh, using payment addresses. Um, the there's two different kinds of payment addresses in Zcash. There's transparent addresses that start with a, a T, so we call, sometimes call them T addresses. Uh, these are basically um, basically Bitcoin style transactions. So everything is exposed publicly, so you see the value, the source, and destination of funds. Um, then there's shielded addresses, and shielded addresses are basically what we built uh, Zcash for. They use the ZK Snark uh, cryptography and all this exotic stuff and zero cash and, and, and so on in order to protect people's privacy. So if uh, transactions involving Z addresses have this very, very strong privacy guarantees, uh, the strongest that we can make them on chain. And uh, so th th these addresses start with a Z, and so we sometimes call them Z addresses. Um, Things get pretty complicated when there are um, transactions that involve both transparent addresses and shielded addresses. And it's not very clear sometimes what the privacy implications are. So it's not really ideal um, user experience from that angle. Um, so the original release of Zcash, uh, had the Z addresses that came with it, um, they, they look kind of like this. Uh, besides being long, which isn't too much of a big deal, uh, they're pretty slow, so if you want to create a transaction that sends or receives, or, or sorry, sends or uh, spends money that I involves this address, then you have to uh, spend minutes of CPU time uh, on my desktop at home. Uh, it takes about 40 seconds to construct a proof. Uh, depending on what you're doing, it could take m uh, multiples of that. Um, it also requires a lot of memory, a lot more memory than what you would have just sitting around on a phone sometimes. Um, We've improved it over time. We've made it closer to about a gigabyte, but uh, it used to be about three or four gigabytes. So these are serious impediments because um, we really need privacy by default in Zcash. Uh, we need it to be efficient enough to create shielded transactions because uh, if, if users don't understand the privacy implications of their transactions, then it, it's, it's not good. Uh, it's not good user experience, and th they might be using transparent addresses without realizing that they uh, the privacy guarantees are, are not strong at all. Um, and, and so there's two kind of important uh, steps to take in order to make sure that we have privacy by default, I think. Uh, the first is to actually make the shielded transactions 
uh, cost competitive with the transparent addresses. Um, in order to do this, we have to do a bunch of cryptographic updates and improve performance and so on, but uh, it's doable and that's kind of the focus of the sapling upgrade. Um, in, not in the sapling upgrade, but in hopefully in a future upgrade, we also need to address uh, feature parity. So we need to add features like shielded multisig and things that businesses need uh, so that eventually we can have shielded transactions that do mostly what, or perhaps some superset of what you can do with, uh, with Bitcoin transactions, with transparent transactions, and uh, we can get rid of the transparent transactions entirely. That would be nice. So the sapling upgrade has kind of two, two major um, kind of separable components. Uh, the first one is that we're actually just making the ZK snarks faster. So Zcash is built on, or the, the shielded transactions are built on top of these uh, very complicated, cool cryptography, uh, uh, zero knowledge proofs, and we need to make them faster, and we have a lot of different ways we can make it faster, and we kind of combine them all uh, as, as much as we can, with, while being as conservative as possible as well. Um, so kind of the three things, uh, th three major things are we're replacing the elliptic curve that we use um, from what we use currently in Zcash. We're replacing it with a new one, a uh, new pairing from the elliptic curve that these SNARKs use. We're also replacing the proving system itself. So the ZK SNARKs uh, have this, a certain construction and we're replacing it with a newer construction that has shorter proofs and, and so on. And we have a new pr uh, parameter setup, which I'll talk about in a second. So. Uh, as far as the elliptic curve is concerned, uh, so obviously ZK SNARKs need these special, uh, specially designed elliptic curves and they actually have to be tuned a little bit so that SNARKs work really efficiently with them. Um, the one that we currently use is called Alt-BN128 and uh, uh, just a note for anyone who comes up with uh, new elliptic curves in the future, please don't put the conjectured security level of your curve in the name because uh, it ended up that it was not really 120 bits under really conservative ass assumptions. To be honest, it's, it's close, close to 128 bits in, pr in practice, but um, under some conservative assumptions about you know, uh, the kind of future advances in cryptography, it, it, could be, it could be as bad as 100 bits. We don't know. So, uh, so we wanted to switch to a new curve, and this is kind of how Sapling started. Uh, shortly after launch, I was looking into all the different kinds of categories of curves and, and so on that we could switch, and I wanted to make sure that we switched to one that didn't sacrifice performance but improved security just enough that we could be, feel comfortable with, you know, uh, predicating a huge network upgrade, something like Sapling, on, on, on a strong foundation. So that's where BLS12381 came from. Um, roughly as efficient in practice uh, as the implementation that we had of our old curve more secure. Um, it's closer to 120 bits under those same conservative assumptions, though in practice is basically 128 bit security level. Um, and it's also tuned for ZK SNARK performance and has a bunch of cool, uh, cool little features which um, are too technical for this talk. But uh, so the next thing, obviously, we have to change the proving system as well. Uh, so Gross 16, Jens Groth came up with this really uh, small and efficient probably the most efficient ZK, pairing based ZK snark, uh, that, at least that I know about um, and that academia knows about. Uh, so we're switching to this and the proofs are smaller and it's a lot cheaper to construct the proofs and, and so on. Um, and the security model is generic group model um, and then recently, uh, I think late last year, the, there's a proof in the algebraic group model which is nice, uh, clean, uh, much more clean and much more conservative than the uh, generic group model. Um, and also parameter generation. So obviously with ZK SNARKs we have to construct the ZK SNARK public parameters for everyone to create and verify proofs. And um, the way that we did this for the first ceremony is that we had a, uh, we had six people and they performed a multi-party computation and only one of them needed to be honest for the, uh, for the resulting parameters to be, uh, to be safe. If they weren't safe, then in, 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 they'd be in the sense that uh, someone could create counterfeit Zcash. Um, so uh, I, after, you know, sometime earlier last year, uh, I was exploring along with uh, uh, Ariel Gabazon and Ian Myers um, different ways that we could Im improve the scalability of the parameter setup. And we came up with this protocol which could scale so that you could have uh, basically an unbounded number of participants uh, that participate with the same property that only one had to be honest. 
However, it's split it into two pieces. Um, there's one ceremony, which is called the Powers of Tao, and the Powers of Tao basically is agnostic to the ZK Snark circuit, so anyone can use the result of the ceremony for their ZK Snark project. Um, and so that's been finished, and the Zcash Foundation was uh, uh, happy to collaborate and facilitate the, the coordination of that. Um, and then there's a second phase, which is specific to the circuit, and we're performing this right now, actually. So if anyone's interested in participating uh, in the sapling MPC, so we're performing MPC for the sapling's uh, parameters, please email mpc at z.cash, and you can uh, convince yourself, as long as your computer is not backdoored or something, that, uh, that your participation in the ceremony was secure and give you a little more confidence in the, in the resulting parameters. Um, so, so that's kind of the basic, uh, you know, uh, uh, foundation of the cryptographic updates, but there's a ton of new stuff on top of that. Um, so we, we improved the performance of the underlying ZK SNARKs and the proving system and so on, but uh, what we're doing in, in the sapling upgrade is we're keeping the existing Sprout Z addresses, we're leaving them the way they are, they're a little bit faster now. We're adding a new type, uh, type of Z address, um, which is much more efficient to send and receive payments with. So, uh, kind of just to give a little recap of, of how, how this stuff works, um, uh, how zero cash works, this is a kind of a, these are this different terminology than what they use in the zero cash paper, but this is kind of how we describe it. Um, in zero cash, you basically have notes, which you can think of as kind of like unspent transaction outputs in, in Bitcoin. Um, they basically have a, a value and some predicate, an address that's allowed to spend it. Um, and we place commitments to these notes, these cryptographic commitments, inside of an accumulator. In the case of zero cash, in the case of Zcash, we use a Merkle tree because we have ZK snarks, we can use a gigantic Merkle tree uh, and to protect people's anonymity and privacy. Um, and so uh, once your note's in the tree, in order to spend it, you prove that it's in the tree, and then you simultaneous, simultaneously have to reveal this thing called a nullifier or a serial number, which uh, kind of uniquely fingerprints the thing that's being spent, but it doesn't identify uh, what's actually being spent, which node it is that's being spent. So this is kind of the fundamental um, concept. This is this this basic framework is, is kind of how crypto note works and other things as well. Um, but uh, obviously, with with uh, with with uh, zero cash, we can use these big Merkle trees with snarks, and that's kind of the um, kind of the benefit of, of zk snarks. Um, so, in order to make the the rest of the construction really efficient, uh, and all these all these components, uh, like every single one of these things, these notes, these uh, the, the accumulator and the nullifiers, we have to choose cryptographic primitives that are really efficient to evaluate inside of zk snarks. So, the uh, main breakthrough in, involved in in uh, sapling is this uh, combination of elliptic curve based primitives. That uh, and, and and a bunch of circuit opt optimizations and things like that uh, that are really interesting. Um, there's this thing called Jub Jub, which is an embedded elliptic curve. It's on a curve that's really efficient to um, reason about inside of the zk snark construction. Um, so on top of this uh, embedded curve, we construct these things like Peterson hashes, which is a collision-resistant hash function that we can construct a uh, Merkle tree out of and uh, significantly Im improve performance from that. Um, we can also build other kinds of elliptic curve primitives inside the circuit, like uh, Peterson commitments and um, other kinds of uh, like value commitments, which kind of can, can be used to uh, ensure that values balance between inputs and outputs and things like that in, in uh, the construction. And we can also use uh, different, uh, different kind of structures in, in our keys that are more asymmetric, so to improve performance. Um, the, the addresses in Sapling are, they're shorter, um, which I, it's not really, a, not really a goal at this point, but um, they only contain one group element, um, which is a point on the Jub Jub curve, and uh, they have this really nice key design that because we've been able to do much more sophisticated stuff, uh, we were able to make these viewing keys, which you can see the incoming and the outgoing in the Sprout construction, you couldn't see the outgoing payments. Um, and also, the, the addresses have this cool feature, which allows um, you know, exchanges and merchants that are interested to 
uh, receive on trillions of addresses simultaneously without any overhead, which is uh, really useful for promoting the use of shielded transactions because every single time uh, there's a payment on the Zcash network, everyone has to try to decrypt the payment to see if it was to them. And so if they have to do it for a billion addresses, it's not really ideal. Um, you can kind of speed it up a little bit, but it, it, we needed to modify the construction so that uh, these addresses could be um, distinct and unlinkable, yet you could receive on all of them at, at once. So it's very useful. Um, the other major difference from the original Sprout construction is that we split the circuit that we use uh, in the construction into two pieces. One is the inputs. They have their own proofs and, and so on, each one of them in, individually. And then the outputs have a different, uh, a different proof as well. And so two different circuits. This is a diagram here of the spend circuit. So um, what is kind of all the the construction and every, every little piece that's talking to e each other inside the ZK SNARK circuit um, for the spend circuit. Uh, and so, yeah. Um, the performance improvements in total, I guess, uh, we get close to about two times performance just from the ZK SNARK and, and elliptic curve improvements alone. Um, and on top of that, we get an, an additional about eight times improvement, but probably closer to like 20 or 30 times, depending on what you're doing, um, improvement in performance uh, in general. So that takes, you know, what would, t what would take maybe 40 seconds on my computer at home, about two and a half or three seconds instead, which is uh, amazing. It actually makes it possible for us to put uh, shielded transactions on mobile phones, which is, uh, and, and, and perhaps uh, other things like that. So yeah, very <laughs> crucial. <clears throat> Another kind of interesting thing that I actually forgot to put in the slides is that the construction um, is designed so that hardware wallets can perform signatures on uh, shielded transactions without uh, needing to perform the SNARKs themselves. So we've kind of split the logic of spend authorization away from the SNARK. So in theory, I, I don't know if it will happen, but um, uh, Trezor or some other hardware wallets can can uh, perform these uh, side channel resistant whatever signatures on inside the wallet, but outside the wallet you can have the host computer that's already being trusted with privacy um, perform the ZK SNARK proof or create the proof and so we've, we've designed the construction to kind of allow for hardware wallets as well. So it's exciting. Um, so another kind of fun thing about Sapling is that most of the cryptography is actually written in Rust. So the elliptic curve, the proving system, all of the circuit related stuff, all the bridges and, and, and FFIs and everything that connects to our actual C++ code base, um, and also the multi-party computations. Uh, the powers of tau I've implemented in Rust and actually um, uh, some others have implemented in, 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 in another language as well using a different uh, toolkit. Um, and uh, this, this phase two library that you see is actually you can use this yourself if you want to perform your own MPCs uh, using the powers of tau um, and, and to perform your own MPCs for your own ZK SNARK circuits. That is a cool little library that lets you do that uh, pretty easily as some documentation. Love to see some people try to use that. Um, and Sapling MPC, the MPC that's currently ongoing is actually built on top of uh, phase two. So uh, yep, that's it.